In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, you're welcome to this moment of brief reflection on the Word of God for the seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year C. We are reminded today of how to witness to Christ as his followers. On the one hand, we are invited to love. On the other hand, we must run away from envy. A new understanding of love and the destructive nature of envy is what we will be speaking about this morning, reflecting on this to help us develop our call to be true witnesses. St. Paul reminds us today that from the earthly man, which is Adam, we get our soul, and from the heavenly man, Christ, spirit, so that our souls and spirit could be at its desired perfection, we must model the soul on Christ. Today Jesus invites us, therefore, to model on him by going the extra mile. That is a demand of Christianity, hard as it may be. Going the extra mile is not as easy as we think. It's not unusual for us to stick to the status quo, the conventional way of doing things, and continuously do them even when they do not seem to produce results. Jesus speaks to us today about something very new. In Luke chapter 6, 27, that's where the gospel starts from. He says, love your enemies. Be good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who treat us badly. Then offer the other cheek to the person that slaps you. And the man who takes your cloak, give him also your tunic. And he says, give to everyone who asks of you and do not ask for reform from the man who robs you. And the golden rule comes after, to others as to self. We must be unique and different from the pagans. Because Jesus says to us from then on, if you only love those who love you, what thanks can you expect? If you only loan to those who would pay back, what thanks should you expect? <coughs> now, this is the newness Christ brings into human history, which makes Christianity forever different and distinct religion that could never have a match anywhere. Love your enemies. Who are our enemies? We must sometimes ask, because we Christians make a lot of mistakes and misinterpret Jesus with statements like, ah, we are not supposed to have enemies and never consider a fellow human being an enemy because we are called to love. Now, this is a very terrible mistake to make here is why. It calls for discernment. Christ wants us to discern. If we are not able to identify a disease, how do we go about the cure? And I think this is the challenge for us Christians. We must be able to identify our enemies before we could pray for them. Because if we do not know them, how are we going to pray for them and what is going to be the prayer intention? Enmity most often is rooted in jealousy and envy. And these have their patron as a devil, whom right from the onset was jealous of man and wanted to drag man and still wants to drag man to his camp, of which St. Peter warns us in chapter 5, verse 8 of his letter. Your enemy, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion seeking someone to destroy. And we are called to stand up to him. We must face envy from both sides in order to win. What is envy? It's a sort of sadness or anger at the good fortune of others. Out of the Ten Commandments, two of them speak against envy. Because envy as an evil causes one to feel painful emotionally. A pain which blends resentment, hostility, resulting from inferiority complex. Thomas Aquinas once said, for instance, charity rejoices in our neighbor's good while envy grieves over it. So love rejoices, envy grieves. We have a choice to make here. 
This usually manifests in jealousy. Jealousy is the tribute mediocrity sometimes pays to the genius. Envy can have both a positive and negative effect on the person. The positive effects of envy, it is that increased performance or attempt at self-improvement. When I'm envious of somebody, I could improve and want to be like him positively. However, it can have some very aggressive or negative effects, which could be criminal. It can lead to belittling, gossip, withholding information from others, and giving someone the silent treatment. And of course, it's a vice. And as a vice, envy is the opposite of love, which is a virtue because while love celebrates the good of another, envy does what, as we just heard from Thomas Aquinas, it seeks to destroy it. The initial stage of jealousy, my dear friends, and envy involves an individual having that desire for what another person has. And when one cannot get it, it turns into full-blown hatred, which could lead to death. In most cases, of course, it does. Because then we spend the rest of our lives planning on how to eliminate, get out of the way, and destroy a person that we think possesses that which we ought to possess instead of them. It doesn't belong to us. If only we could convert the amount of time we sometimes spend in planning evil for the other person, into doing something productive, into involving in some productive job for ourselves, I bet you, my dear friend, my brother, our success would be by far greater than that mirage which we always pursue, be clouded with envious eyes in others. We have to be very careful, therefore. Envy destroys a person both mentally and physically. Because envious persons, of course, they are prone to feel hostile. They are resentful, anger and irritable, and as a result, are always less likely to feel grateful or have some positive feeling about themselves. They become slaves to their feelings about others. They become so blinded that they spend the rest of their lives nursing hearts over others. And eventually such persons can become, you know, depraved and anxious. You know, when you are like that, you live a life of what? Prejudice, which I refer to as <coughs> a maximum hatred for minimum reason. So this leads to personal unhappiness. We shouldn't be the case for you and I. Because when we think, why not me? People who fall into this category usually are bored to be with. Think of your friend who is a jealous person. Most people don't want to hang out with them because they are unpleasant to, to be with. They have, of course, as a result, fewer friends. Because to help them in the first place is that they feel that to receive an assistance from you is to belittle their ego. They tend to feel resentful that assistance in the first place was necessary. And this is coming from pride. And pride is coming from the evil one, the devil, whom I said is the patron. So the Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches us in number 2539, it sees envy as a capital sin, referring to the sadness at the sight of another's goods which I have been speaking about, and the inordinate, the moderate desire to acquire someone else's good, even unjustly, and that is why it's deadly. These gifts must not be material. They could be intellectual, they could be spiritual, as virtues. They stand as an obstruction to one's seeming success, but this should not be the case, my dear friend. Such feelings lead to wishful great harm. To our neighbors and as such it is a mortal sin this is what the church teaches St. Augustine has considered envy as purely diabolic that's why the connection with the devil because envy is the mother of hatred that intense dislike extreme aversion or hostility towards another detraction is also there because it reveals someone's true faults 
to a third party without valid reason, usually with the aim of destroying the person's reputation. It leads us also into calumny, making false witnesses and defamatory statements in order to damage the reputation of a person we are envious or jealous of. My brothers and sisters, this should not be something we develop. Why should we be displeased with someone else's prosperity? This is wickedness. We must run away from it. So the church teaches us envy represents that form of sadness and therefore refusal of charity, refusal of love. While Jesus says to us we must love today, the baptized person should struggle against it by exercising goodwill in our lives. Because envy often comes from what? Pride, as I say. Why not me? Why him? Why her? Such tendencies usually make us to want to be the synergy of everything the world could give. But things never work out that way, my dear friends. To think that we can have it all is to live in a fool's paradise. The baptized person, you and I, should train ourselves to live in what? Humility. Accepting our lot in life. No one is blessed with it all. Whether the spiritual or material gifts of life, no. God in his wisdom has given each one of us according to our capacity. So why do I look at another person? Why do you look at your neighbor? Remember Cain, for instance. He had the opportunity to be acceptable before God, but he chose the path of evil. Envious of his brother Abel led to what? Hatred and eventually full-blown murder. He murdered his brother. But the question is, did he ever get accepted or acceptable in the sight of God? No. Instead, he worsened his case. Should we love to see God glorified in our actions, my dear friends, in our lives, then we must seek to rejoice in our brother's or our sister's progress. And we shall, through that, give glory to God who has blessed us all accordingly. We could overcome and conquer envy whenever we rejoice in the merit of others and we will be praising God. My dear friends, when we are envious, we make those whom we envy the limit of our success or the limit of our capabilities. It actually means we remain enslaved to the limitations set by our jealousy, while in fact the world is so big, full of opportunities. There is space for everyone. I do not have to pull someone down in order to climb up, my dear friend. We don't have to do that. I do not have to kill someone else in order to live. I do not have to assassinate someone's character in order to have a good name. No, we could all have good names. So why am I tempted towards this? I do not have to destroy someone's future in order to have a good future myself. No, God in his wisdom has given us all equal opportunities. The success of another year for my friends should spur us to improve ourselves, to do better, to praise on in life. And we could someday get to the destination, which we might be by far ahead of what we see in others that we have now set as the limit to our success. No, dear friends, let us make God our yardstick and not someone out there who struggles to be himself because envy and jealousy is what leads us to make others the yardstick. Well, here's the good news. However bad it may be, it is possible for us to overcome such feelings and tendencies if we have them, we must first and foremost own up to being envious. This may be hard, it may be harder than it sounds, but it is possible. We must learn to face our envious feelings whenever we have them, if we must overcome them. Of course, identify the disease, then you can look for the cure. As Christians, my dear friends, we need to learn self-reliance and to persevere in trying to do our best in whatever we do, and let God's blessings flow onto them. Because a continual self-introspection 
can help us to understand if our thoughts are envious or not and resist the temptations of acting on them accordingly. We, can, we must therefore ignore such thoughts when they come into our mind. How the success of another should be the limit or yardstick to our own struggle is sometimes something that amazes me. In the grand scheme of things, the world has given equal opportunity to all as I have said. So why get fixated on what your brother or your sister has? Let us focus on building ourselves. Let us pray and focus on the positive qualities we have which God has given to us all, and we can really improve on them. So if we wish to present or show ourselves as the best, or the strongest, the wisest, or the persons who should be the center in our community, then, as Christians, we must demonstrate what it means to possess these high virtues and qualities. We can be the strongest by defending the weak, rather than by destroying or crushing them. We must show ourselves to be the wisest by good counseling rather than by detraction. And we can show ourselves the richest by helping those who are in need rather than by accumulating. Or by reaching out rather than by extortion. We must show ourselves the most powerful by freeing others around us rather than by imprisoning them based on the advantages we have over them. My dear friends, on the other hand, how do we treat people who are jealous or envious of us? Today we see a perfect example which fits the requirements of Jesus, which he speaks to us in the gospel. Jesus gives a new commandment in his capacity as a legislator. We see already in the first reading the encounter between Samuel and Saul, uh, between David and Saul. Saul was an envious person after the life of David. Now we see, David was an example of how we ought to behave when we encounter such opportunity to destroy our enemies. In, my, in the first place, there is a saying where I come from that when we see a madman naked and out of pity we reach out, to cover him or her. People might not notice the difference between the two of us. So it means we must not be reactors as Christians, but actors, initiators of our actions. So when we reach, we react to those who are jealous of us with the intention of paying back in the same coin, we, we belong to the same camp. So David gives us an example by sparing the life of the king, the Lord's anointed, actually, when he had already been rejected as king. So, we are all the image and likeness of God, even when our sins have separated us from God. We are still the Lord's anointed. And so we must learn to respect that image of God in our brothers and sisters, instead of destroying it, build it up. Of course, David says, I cannot put my hand on the Lord's anointed and spared the life of soul. My dear friends, I like all of us today to think about our lives. I do not know how many enemies you have discovered you've got, but I'm sure all of us have little enemies around us. Jesus wants us to forgive them. Jesus wants us to pray for them. Jesus wants us to love them. And that is the new, the newness Jesus brings in Christianity. How much love could you have to your enemy. If you were David, would you have spared the life of Saul? Who are the souls in your life? Can we behave like David? That is a challenge for us today, my dear friends. Let us remember, if we turn back to look at those who are en and be envious of others, we cannot forge ahead. Let us therefore pray for them and move on with our lives so that we can be true sons and daughters of God. I pray for all of us today that God will give us the brains, would give us the grace to be able to reflect on his words and act on them accordingly. May God enlighten us, open our minds, 
and accept from him these teachings so that instead of being envious of others, we would use love as an antidote to all this, rejoicing with charity over the good of others, celebrating their success, and filled with them at their failures. And this way, we would be able to overcome these feelings whenever they come to us. Let us not pretend about them, honor up to them, and work on them. May the Lord bless us and grant us his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Sunday.